Hi, just a quick but very interesting video showing you an interesting uh, phenomenon here which um, it came about because I was uh, testing this little uh, Alienware DP100 uh, power supply here. Uh, I'll link that in video if you haven't uh, seen it down below. And uh, while I was measuring the noise for this thing, it got me thinking about something that I read I, probably decades ago now and I can't find it but please leave it in the comments down below if you have any reference to this and this is where uh, potentially uh, physical vibration hence why this thing's moving <laughs> physical vibration in uh, switching components like uh, multi-layer ceramic capacitors and your inductors and stuff like that can actually uh, be impacted by uh, physical vibration and I read that you could potentially lower uh, s switching uh, component noise by actually hitting a, a certain mechanical vibration or subharmonic of the uh, vibration here and you know I've done uh, quite a few videos linked in up here and down below if you haven't seen them where I discuss the impact of shock and vibration on multi-layer ceramic capacitors and how uh, capacitors can actually sing. It's a phenomenon in the industry called singing capacitors. Uh, and uh, like, and I've done videos on shock responsive capacitors and stuff like that. So physical vibration can actually have a real impact. I did uh, an interesting uh, video, I'll also link this in, where uh, Tesla, uh, when they were developing their compute uh, module um, for their AI, uh, you know, learning systems, they actually had a very interesting MEMS oscillator uh, that was impacted by nearby multi-layer ceramic capacitors in the switching power supply. So I'll link in that video down below. It physically broke them. It took them ages to figure out where the source of the problem was. Anyway, it's a very well-known effect where uh, components like inductors and capacitors can actually be impacted by uh, vibration. And you might have actually heard a power supply like a squeal, you know, like uh, yeah, like this high-pitched uh, squeal sound. That can come from the inductors and or capacitors in the power supply. So anyway, I thought we'd look at the noise here. So I've got my um, same uh, setup as uh, before. I'm um, uh, high-frequency probing my uh, this output here, and I've got the output going over to my electronic load over here. I'm drawing uh, three amps, but I'm also um, using my little uh, vibration motor here and you've seen this in previous uh, videos uh, where I'll link those in as well tons of videos linked in and I've got that going through this uh, power amplifier up here okay so I'm just actually driving this at the moment uh, with uh, the signal gen from the uh, scope I'm just driving at eight and a half hertz here and you can see it physically vibrating and I can well, it's going to bottom out there. I don't want it to bottom out, so <laughs> I'll lower that back down. But uh, let's see if we can actually find a sub-resonant point. We won't be able to go to multiple re resonances because the switching frequency of this is 246 kilohertz, right? So you can see that there is the main switching frequency. So this is at uh, 3 amps here. Now, I'm going to see if I can actually wind up this frequency and we'll see if we can get any impact on that at all. Get rid of that and I'll adjust it here. And let's uh, let's go. Okay, so we're at whoa, 16 hertz. Nothing. 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 Whoa, is it going to survive? <laughs> Nothing. Let's go up. Let's keep going. Let's get whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hang on, my probe came out. Don't you hate that? That's what she said. Hang on, I'll tape that up. All right, there you go. Hopefully that won't come out now. Now, also, I've got the peak-to-peak -peak and the standard deviation. So 110 microvolts here and uh, 2.5 millivolts uh, peak there. That's uh, so RMS noise and peak-to-peak. Uh, -peak. So we're looking really, it's probably going to be impacted more on the peak-to-peak uh, -peak aspect if this, if we can actually get the uh, resonant frequency for this or sub-resonant frequency. So I'm going to take that up. I'm going to wind that wick up. And so we're looking at 246 kilohertz, so maybe at 200 and something hertz, perhaps. I don't know. I'm going to wind it up. Now, you won't fit. Trust me, that's vibrating. I'm not sure if you can even hear it. You probably can't hear that, but that is still... Oh, yeah. Yeah, you should be able to hear that. Whoa, hello. Hello. <laughs> I can hear that. Hear it. Actually, I'll turn my microphone around. So there you go, I've got my microphone a bit closer now. Now let's see if we can get near a harmonic of this thing. So 246 kilohertz, so we're looking at about 250, something like that. And 
check that out. Look at that. Wow. And if we go above that, no, no, it's back to it's back to normal. Whoa, that's really bad. <laughs> okay, don't want to go higher than that. But let's wind that wick back down again and see if we can reproduce that. And look at that. Wow. At around about that 250 or so mark. So there's way lower there. We're talking like 1.3 millivolts peak to peak there. That is really quite something. Wow. And if we lower it back down, we get 180. We don't seem to get it at the like 25 hertz or whatever, but at 250, yeah, we don't seem to get it. Whoa, which, <laughs> yeah, we don't seem to get it at like the 24, 25 hertz mark. That's too much of a sub multiple. But anyway, you saw that around about 250. So that is interesting, is it not? The physical vibration of this unit, but it has to do with the construction, and it's it, like there's nothing wrong with this unit. I, I think this it'll it'll happen, but it depends on the specific component. So it could happen on any design. Uh, please leave it in the comments down below if you've actually uh, seen experienced uh, this. I've experienced the other way, where physical vibration of the capacitors. Uh, causes a problem or the inductors causes a problem elsewhere. Now I've seen all sorts of uh, vibration effects in electronics but I've never seen it lower the system noise like that and I don't really understand the exact mechanism behind this. So I, I don't know. I, I'm going to open it up, leave it in the comments down below if you have any idea why it would lower system noise like that at a sub harmonic multiple of the switch in frequency, because I'm at a bit of a loss to actually explain that. You saw, saw it there, it did actually work. So please leave it in the comments down below. It's an interesting phenomenon. You can lower your system noise when you're at a sub harmonic frequency. I don't think it's gonna work at the much higher frequency because you're not gonna be able to vibrate at in the megahertz region, right? So you're not gonna be able to physically vibrate in the megahertz, but you can do it with a sub multiple. And you saw it at 250 hertz, that dropped the system noise quite substantially. Anyway, if you enjoyed that video, please give it a big thumbs up and as always, discuss down below. Fascinating, huh? Catch you next time.